Okay, good morning, guys. You good guys morning. excited to continue working on your comics today? Yes. Awesome. Um, who was able to kind of come up with a story yesterday for our final comic? I'm going to do that one. Not me. Not you. Nick, if it's that you that said that? Okay. Nick, you can go back and listen to yesterday's um, on, on YouTube. You can watch the video. Um, but we, um, we want to have a story for our final comic. Okay. And I, you, you probably already have this because you have so many storylines and characters in your head, okay? Yeah. So you can just come up with your story. Like Archie was just sitting there sprouting off a whole story. So if that's how it comes to you, that's great. Like that's awesome. Sometimes inspiration just comes to us and we're just like filled with so many ideas. Other times we need a little help. So I included this bubble chart to just kind of like help write down ideas and kind of help you organize um, your comic into sections like the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then these are like for the details. So Madeline, how did that go for you? Good. Good, awesome. I'm so happy to hear it. Are you guys so excited about your story? Can't yes. wait to write it, awesome. I can't wait to read it. Um, so today we are going to talk a little bit more about expressions and speech. And today is a fun day because we get to actually start drawing our comic. So we kind of got the, the story put together and now we're going to start creating our visual story. Yeah, okay, so expressions on your character are really important. This is Tintin. And um, he has this expression now, and you can see like his eyebrows just have like a little shape to them, and his mouth is downturned. And then look at this expression. So his face is really simple, but just the slightest change of some of his features create a whole different expression. Okay, and then his speech is a little different as well. Um, Tintin is actually a French um, character. So I included this paper right here that has lots of different expressions depending on how you might feel. So, so today I figured we could start drawing our character and experimenting with different expressions that they might have throughout the story. Like think about your story and um, start picking up some of the expressions. Like I know that at this part he's going to feel confused or at this part I know he's going to feel happy. So you can start practicing drawing your character with those different expressions. Just like we did yesterday, practicing our characters, drawing them. So I'm I'm going to um, use my marker, but you guys can use your pencil. Okay. So my character is a balloon. So I'm going to draw my balloon, and I know that at one part of my story, he's going to feel scared. So I'm going to look for scared on my little paper. So let's see. Hmm, I don't do scared. Maybe, maybe I'll do anxious. Okay, so anxious is right here. That's a little bit like scared. Maybe that's more accurate. So I'm going to like use the little um the little glare on my bubble. I'm going to kind of create an anxious expression. Maybe 
Maybe he looks like that when he's anxious. Like, oh, I don't know about this. Okay, so you guys can start drawing your character and experimenting with different expressions. So one part of my story, I know he's going to be really happy. So maybe Maybe this will be his, his happy face. Mm, let's see. I know that he'll be Oh, there's frightened on here. Hmm. And if you draw something and you're like, well, I don't know if I that looks like what I want it, you can just just try it again. And you don't even have to draw all of the character's body. You can just draw the head and experiment with just the head. I like this one, and I like this one. So I'm going to just start putting little stars by the ones that I like. I know that I'm, I want to use. So I'll tell you about the story that I came up with for my character. So I used that sentence, um, Jello the balloon wants to ride a roller coaster, but is afraid of heights. So I figured he's a balloon. It would be funny if he was afraid of heights. So that's going to be one of his faults, one of his weaknesses. So, but he's standing in line and he's got his little sidekick balloon I decided he's going to have, his little puppy dog balloon. Um, and he gets on the roller coaster and I'm going to have some frames, um, some panels that show them standing in line and then getting on the roller coaster and then them starting to move and he's going to be really scared and nervous. And then I'm going to show some uh, um, panels of them flipping around, doing loop-de-loops and going around curves and going really fast. And then he's going to start to love it. And he's going to start being like, wee, this is so fun. And then when it comes to a stop, I'm going to show um, a picture of um, Jello with his um, his sidekick dog, and you know how like 
on balloon animals. Like if you squeeze one part, like the air goes to the other parts and it kind of makes one part skinny and the rest of it's like bigger. So he, my gel of the balloon is going to have squeezed his dog so tight that he like made his dog's belly super skinny. And the dog's going to be like, I feel so sick right now. So I'm, I'm thinking of my story and all the different parts of my story. And I want to practice drawing what my character is going to look like in each part. Okay, so you could even um, draw your sidekick. Or you can start drawing some of your scenes. You can start practicing some of the scenes and putting your character in those scenes. So I'm not exactly sure what my dog will look like. So I'm going to practice. And don't make it perfect. Yes, it doesn't need to be perfect. So maybe. Maybe he looks like that with like the air squeezed out of the middle of his belly. Oh, that's good. It looks like a normal dog. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's when his air gets squeezed out of him and it make him feel sick from riding the roller coaster. Have you guys ever ridden a roller coaster before? One. No. One. Yeah. Did it make you feel sick and dizzy or did you like it? I never went on a roller coaster. It didn't after make that. me sick. I think I liked it. Um, you liked I don't remember, it? but I think I was little. Yeah. I love the roller coasters that make your stomach feel like it's gone into your esophagus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite. I love them. <laughs> Like that Wait, one I, particular feeling is my, is a feeling I really enjoy. <laughs> that's awesome to hear that someone likes that feeling. I don't, I, I don't like roller coasters. So Could I too high? I'm a little bit like Jello. I'm a little nervous to get on them. <laughs> I'm still nervous. I just know that I, at the end, I'm going to. You're going to be fine. Be sick. I don't. <laughs> I, spe I specifically like the wooden roller coasters. Those are my oh, favorite. Yeah. But, the, um, you know, like the Superman one where they're just dropping you from really high. Yes. Nah. I mean, no, I, I could um, never do that. I'm pretty terrified the whole time. It's not, and it's not a fun kind of terrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's normal, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. All right. So, how's your your expression going? You guys got Good. a few expressions? Yeah, it's going well. I have a little book. I'm all in black, but I don't know. Thank you. 
So eyebrows seem to be really important. And one funny thing about eyebrows in cartoons is they can go over your hair. Like, I don't know if you can see her eyebrows are like over her hair. But eyebrows can be very expressive. Maybe you can see it better there. So if you can add eyebrows to your character, that would be great. Like, our eyebrows don't go up all that way. Like, that's, our eyebrows don't move that far up the top of our head. But, and they help to show that excitement, right? And then those, do you see his eyebrows here? They're like really furrowed and like, and So eyebrows are super important too. So, show expressions. I'm gonna make a note. Okay. So after you guys get some expressions, um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is your character speech. Um, and we touched on this a little bit yesterday. Um about like how your character can talk differently and that can define his personality. So I wanted to show you this comic. I don't know if you guys know who Pop Pie is, but um, on the next lesson, there's a little comic of Pop Pie and he, he, um, he doesn't speak always grammatically correct and he kind of cuts off some of his words. I made this guy. I made this guy. What did you make, Bud? You're making that guy? Stop, Archie. So, um, that's something to think about. But today, what I really want to focus on is starting to map out our comic books, um, little panels, okay? I'm mapping out all of our little squares. So when you read your comic book story, you might have all of them perfectly square, the same size, or you might have where we did like on the first day, you might have some long ones here and there. Okay, so there's comic book um, panels come in all different sizes. Like you can see in this one, this first panel is larger than the next two. And depending on what your scene is and how much stuff you have to put in there, they might be different sizes. Like this Flintstones one has these two panels and then one long panel at the bottom in order to fit in this whole scene. Okay, so you guys might want to start drawing your, your squares for your story and thinking like what size panel am I going to need to be able to show that scene. And um, when you have shorter panels, it's kind of like a book, like you read through it faster. So if they're short okay. all together, you're going to like read that a little faster visually. Whereas if you have this long one, you're going to slow down and look at everything. So maybe in the exciting parts of your story, you can have short panels all together and in maybe the parts that you want the reader to slow down, 
then you can have a longer panel. So you can use the size of the panel for different, different things. And I also wanted to show you guys, we added some things to our panels, some more burst balloons and, and things. So in comic books, we use different um, speech bubbles for different things. So this is called a burst balloon and it's when you're super excited and the person's actually shouting. Okay, so you can use a jagged balloon to represent shouting loud voices. This one with like the lightning bolt end on it um, is for like radio or telephone or TV. Um, it's like signals like something that's electronic that's talking. And then you can add music notes to your balloons if someone's singing. And then if they're whispering, it's usually a dashed balloon. It's not a full, fully filled in. And then these rough balloons are like, if it's like a creepy voice, like a monster or something, or some creepy voice, you can make these like really rough, wiggly balloons. So there's a page there that shows you a lot of different balloons you can use depending on how your character is speaking. Kind of cool, huh? I've never noticed that before in comic books, but now that I know what to look for, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're everywhere. Let's see, I don't know if I included any examples of different balloons. Okay, and I also wanted to point out that when you're using your Sharpie, it kind of bleeds through to the other side of the page, like this is what I drew, and then it bled through, and it might actually leave speckles and stuff on your, your next page. So um, when you're drawing your comic book page, just use one side of it and, um, and then use another page. Yeah, and so once we get all your pages, um, it's fine that they're two separate pages because yeah. when we your comic book, what we're going to do is we're going to um, have the printer print it front and back like an actual comic book. Yeah, it's fine that it's on two separate pages because we'll combine it with yeah. the computer. Okay. Yeah. And I would even take out a page and set it in there behind what you're um, drawing so that any bleeding that goes onto this page will go onto your scrap piece of paper. So then you can use this page and not have like any speckles on it. I don't know if you guys can see that it like left little black speckles on my paper. And we don't want those in the middle of our other drawings either. So, um, but usually an illustrator, when they are planning to illustrate a book, they'll draw what's called thumbnails. So they'll draw like little pages, or in this case, little panels, and they'll just sketch ideas of what each scene might look like. So if you want to do that, you are very welcome to do it. And it, it's not detailed or anything like that. Like it would literally be just like, I want, um, them to be standing in line here, and then I want the roller coaster in the background. So, like, I just kind of sketched an idea of the layout. So, like, my balloons are here, and I just drew lines for people, 
and then I just drew a squiggly for the roller coaster in the background. So these thumbnails aren't detailed. They're just kind of giving it, you an idea of what you want to put in each frame. Okay. And then that helps you when you go to actually draw your actual one. You're like, okay, all right. So I need to draw a line and the roller coaster in the background. And then you can draw it in more detail um, when you're ready to do your final one. Yeah. Okay, and then in my story, my next one is they're going to be getting in the little, the roller coaster seat. Okay, so... And just like drawing a very rough sketch of what it might look like. So this this helps to have your story broken down into these little parts so that you know like in this bubble I put standing in line, this bubble getting into their seat, and in this bubble I put that the roller coaster is starting to move. I'm going to put their feet here. So now they're starting to move up the roller coaster. My very first roller coaster um, was a very scary experience. And I was in the seat with my brother and the car just started going up this incline. And I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. It's really slow and nice. And then it yeah, like, it was so fast. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. the thought crossed my mind. I'm like, uh, if we're going up, that means we have to go down. And once we got to the top and we started going down, Oh, it was so scary. I felt like I was going to fall out of the cart. But <laughs> yeah, that's what happens to all people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm drawing that scene where he's going up the roller coaster. He <laughs> doesn't know what's going on yet. So you guys can use your, your experiences in your past to help you write your story and think about how you felt in that moment. So I'm just gonna start drawing. All right, drawing some little thumbnails.
So is that roller coaster going to be very big? What was that, Madeline? So, so is the roller coaster going to be very big? Yes, it's going to be a very big, and big, scary roller coaster. There's going to be loop de loops and turns and hills and all kinds of stuff. Yes. I'm going to get this out of you. And Jello's wrapping his little um, string around his dog to hold on to his dog. He's like, oh, he's scared. So scared. Yes. That make him feel better. How's your story coming along, Madeline? Good. I'd love to hear what you have in mind for your story. You're working away, huh? Did we lose the cannon boys? Oh, no, there's not there. What are you what are your guys' stories gonna be? What about you, Madeline? What's your story? Oh good. You're drawing a, your little thumbnails? Perfect. What happens in your story, Madeline? Huh? What happens in your story? Well, uh, I the ice cream got it stuck in a box. Then she tried to push the box, and then and then she got away. And then she tried to go to the water. But there was too much sand, so she tried um, to push herself into the water. Awesome. And did she get to the water in the end? Yeah. Oh, good. That's always a happy ending. I love it, Madeline. Thank you. Just got to put a sand. Good. We're going to beach with sand. Maybe she has to like dodge a bunch of people on the beach, like someone's playing ball and she has to go around the ball and not get hit by it, or think oh, about yeah. like, things like that. Maybe you could add some some frames in um in your comic book of like showing like kind of a dangerous trek across the beach for a little ice cream cone. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. How's your story going coming along, Nick? How's your story, Archie? I heard some of it yesterday. Rocker and Sawyer, do you guys need any help or you guys got your story and everything? We're good? Awesome. Is that writing it on your little thumbnails?
Okay, so once you guys have your your little thumbnails and you start to get an idea of your story, you can start drawing out your your final squares. And I would just do that in pencil first. And you might want to think about um, having a square at the beginning, just to kind of show where you're at. So let's see. In this comic, they put like a little square at the beginning um, that says they're at the toll bridge. So it kind of give context of where you're you're at. Like you might have. Like for me, they might be at the fair, so I might want to include the entrance of the fair and say state fair or whatever. State fair. And you could um, include like a picture of the beach with a sign that says Madeline Beach or something like that. You can call it whatever. Beach. Yeah. Real sand. <laughs> Real sand. That would be perfect to put on a sign. Real sand here. Get your free sand. <laughs> so I'm going to start mapping out my squares. And I'm going to do like I did last time. Now I make the back, now I make the ball. Oh, these can be perfectly square, but if you don't care, that's fine too. And when you're drawing in pencil, it's best to draw really lightly so that when you erase it, you won't see your pencil marks anymore.
I'm making my squares three inches by three inches. And you, you can definitely ask um, your parents to help you draw these if you want them really perfect, but you don't have to have them perfect. So these are what my squares look like. And when you draw your square, make sure to leave that little gutter space between each square. Okay. And then I'm not going to outline them until I'm all done drawing. Always. And one thing I like to do when I'm drawing something like I haven't seen a roller coaster in a really long time. So I might want to go look up a picture of a roller coaster and use it to help me draw my roller coaster. So you guys can definitely look at pictures to help you draw your own picture. Um, one thing I also wanted to show you guys is, um, Um, like movement lines. So like here's an example right here. So their car is moving and there's like these little trail lines and like some dust. So um, you can definitely put lines in your um, your pictures to show movement. Let me see like here's an example in this comic like this little curly q line that's like him jumping into the the leaves or him riding this skateboard there's some little trailing lines behind him to show that he's moving <laughs> Okay, so you can add some like little lines in your drawings to show your characters moving. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working on between today and tomorrow. We're really going to start mapping out our comic book into our final little panels. Okay, and it'd be best if you could have your comic book have at least a couple pages so that it's actually like an actual book. Okay, but you can definitely have more. But that's a lot of drawing too, so it's up to you how many pages you want in your comic book. It really is up to how long your story is for how much pages. If you can't, it's like if you want to have three pages, but you can, but you can't fit your entire story. Yeah, more. That's true. 
We're That's leaving right. that decision entirely up to you. And Nick, yeah. because we're, because this is all like distance, you know, usually in the summertime, we're so busy and we need you to try to get it done by the end of the week. It's fine if you want to take a little bit longer to, to do your comic book. I'll just come by and pick it up when you're finished with it. Okay. Oh, that's okay. true. Mom will just text me. So like. We're like, of course, Jess and I are really excited to see it, but you don't have to, you don't have to rush it if you don't want to, okay? Yeah, take your time, because it could, it could take a while to draw all of this. Yeah. And if you want more pages, you can add a whole nother scene or something that happens, or like, like, uh, I talked to Madeline about, like, adding little details about the ice cream cone crossing the beach like that will add a few more panels in her comic book just those little details right so you can add things or take away things um to change the length of the book for sure okay so tomorrow uh keep working on this and um Draw in pencil first, okay? We're not going to outline it quite yet, okay? And then um, tomorrow we're going to learn more about lettering, okay? That's going to be fun. Yes. So then you can lettering add is one of my favorite things. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay, bye. 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 Bye, bye guys.